Hey guys, Julian Lello here, and today I'm going to be taking you through a little Lightroom tutorial on how I edit backlit portraits. So jumping straight into Lightroom, I'm going to be working on this photo of Jay here. And basically what I'm going to do is start with the basic adjustments panel here. And editing a backlit portrait is really a matter of balance. So often you've got a subject in shadows and you've got some really harsh or bright highlights. So what we do is I'm going to start here um, with the highlights and shadows and what I'm going to do is bring some the highlights down just a little bit to start bringing some detail back into the background and then increasing the shadows a bit so I've got some details back in the garment and in Jay's face. I didn't start with the exposure because I think it's shot pretty well but I am going to increase it just slightly at this stage. These images are often shot really flat also due to the lighting coming from the back. So I'm going to increase the contrast a bit to bring some nice depth and detail back in. Just slide the whites. I'm going to increase the whites a little bit, making that garment, that dress that she's wearing look really nice and crisp and drop the blacks just slightly to bring a bit more contrast back in. Coming down to texture and clarity, just a little bit of texture I'm gonna bring in there, but I am gonna move the clarity slider to the right quite a bit to bring some detail back in. Now moving down to the tone curve. I'm only gonna work with the RGB curve for this image. And what I'm going to do is put in three points, shadows, mid-tones and highlights and create that classic kind of S curve just to bring a bit of contrast back into the image. And bring the highlights up just a little bit. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good. So there's before and after. Already you're seeing a lot more detail and balance back into the image. Now, I didn't play with the vibrance or saturation much because I like to do make most of my adjustments in the HSL panel. So mainly I'm going to be dealing with the oranges and the yellows. And what I want to do is just start by sliding the orange towards the red just a fraction to warm up the image a little. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of the saturation out of that. About there. And I like to up the luminance a little bit on the oranges because you can see it bringing some highlights into her skin, adding a few more contours um, to the face and some really nice highlights and tones to the skin. Again, let's play with the yellows a little bit. I think we might, they're looking a bit green, so I'm gonna bring it towards the orange, just slightly. Maybe again, drop the saturation just a little bit. And the luminance is pretty good. Might just have a look at the reds here. I think I'll leave those where they are. So now moving down, um, to the split toning. Now split toning is where you can add color to your highlights and shadows and this is where you're gonna you can really develop your style or set a mood um, with an image whether it be portrait fashion or even you know street images or landscapes. So what I want to do here is add a little bit of kind of like a red orangey color into the highlights. Um, so I like to just use the dropper here slide along till I see the kind of color that I like. And then what I'll do is I'll play with the saturation from there. So it needs to come back a little bit more. And I like that in somewhere like that. So this is switching the split turning off and then back on. And you can see it's added that nice little bit of warmth to it. I do the same with the shadows and I'm kind of liking the shadows where they are. So I might actually leave the shadows on the split toning. I'm gonna to add just a little bit of sharpening into the image. I like to hold down shot option, slide masking to the right so that I can select the area I wanna sharpen. So mainly just the outline details, the garment, 
and slide that up a little bit. Great. And the last little thing I'm going to play with here is the calibration sliders. So that's your red, green, and blues. Um, with the red, let's start with the red. I think the image is a little bit too red, so I want to shift the reds towards the oranges just slightly and maybe back the saturation off a little bit. Let's have a look at the greens. I think I like where the greens are sitting, but I might. Decrease the saturation just slightly and again I like where the blues are sitting and there's a before and after. Now this is where I would normally take an image into Photoshop and do the last little refinement so skin retouching and that sort of thing. It is possible, depending on what the image is for, if you don't want to go spending another half an hour, hour on an image, getting into those fine little details, and it's just a post for Instagram or something that doesn't require a really high-end edit, this is where you can use some of the Lightroom tools that are quite powerful to touch up a little bit of skin, do some dodging and burning, and add that extra dimension to your image. Um, seeing this is a Lightroom tutorial, I'm gonna really quickly show you maybe just a couple of little tips using a brush tool and the clone stamp tool to just tighten a few little things up. So, just quickly here, I can see there's a little bit of grass or something that has come up into these highlights, which I don't really like. It's a little bit distracting. So I'm just gonna grab the clone tool. And again, this is much better and more accurate when it's done in Photoshop, but if you just drag over that. It's going to pick another spot. It's all white. That one's a pretty simple one. Um, now coming in to the skin, I like to zoom in when I'm working on the skin. Now with the clone tool, you can see this little mark on the hat. You can just draw over that. It's going to pick another area, cover that little mark up. Jay's got really great skin, so I wouldn't do a lot. Um, but what you can do if you wanted to, um, just as an example, if you wanted to get rid of a little mark on the skin, you just tap on it with a clone tool and it picks the closest area um, to clone that point. You hit enter and there it's gone. In terms of dodging, burning, softening skin, if you did want to smooth skin out, Lightroom now has two options. It's got the original softened skin brush and softened skin light. I still find that for me, I prefer doing this in Photoshop because I still find these tools are too harsh. If you see here that I'm using softened skin light and I just tap on a few little areas of the skin that could be smoothed out a little bit. I think it's too far. It starts looking like a filter to me, but you can then move the texture and clarity slider back towards the right, which brings some of those details back in. Be careful when using this tool. Don't tap on things like the eyes, hair, lips, areas where you don't want them to be smoothed out. You want to keep those nice details in those areas. So be wary of that. Hit enter to activate and come back up to the tool and let's do a little bit of dodging. So that is lightening areas. How do you know which areas to lighten? Stick with the highlights that are already there. Um, or otherwise, if you've got a makeup artist on board or the model knows how to do their makeup really well, you'll see the contours of the face with, within the makeup. And you can follow those lines to dodge and then to burn. But with this image here, um, you could just kind of tap a little bit in these areas under the eyes. Um, along the chin, wherever you see those kind of natural highlights, what you want to be doing is highlighting the contours of the face. Again, I think feel like this is too harsh. So this basically just adds exposure into those areas and we can bring that back. You want these things to be subtle. You don't want people to look at an image and go, wow, this was, uh, this has spent a lot of time in Photoshop or this is really overdone. You want them to be subtle, but you want them to add beauty to the image. And then the last one here, we do a burn. So we can just go over some of the shadows what you want to we can go over the the jawline there you could go in and do a little bit of the cheeks and that sort of thing but again it is a quite a harsh shadow so let's increase the exposure where it's dropped it hit enter 
and there you go. So here is our before and after. Now all I'll do is give it a crop depending on where the image is going, 4-5 for that Instagram ratio and that's it. That is how I edit a backlit golden hour portrait in Lightroom only. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see some more of them, let me know in the comments. Hit like, subscribe, and as always, thank you for pressing play.